um, I was reflecting as I was travelling over from uh, Scotland um, that uh, uh, my first academic post 20 years ago, uh, which was also funded by the Roundtree Foundation, uh, was uh, specifically uh, intended to investigate the, the uh, impact of European integration on, on housing uh, systems. Um, and 20 years ago, uh, I, I came to, 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 to Brussels to try and find out what was go going on in the Commission on, on Housing. And whilst uh, there was some interest in the integration of uh, mortgage markets as part of the single market programme um, in what was then uh, known as uh, DG5, uh, we, f we found a, um, a part-time uh, official uh, who was the only person with any responsibility for um, housing. And uh, uh, as I recall, he felt uh, rather isolated uh, in his role. Um, so, so I'm delighted that, uh, that uh, 20 years on, uh, that uh, housing has uh, assumed a, a much greater uh, prominence in the, in the Commission's um, thinking and, and, and approach. Um, of course, the, the, the downside uh, of, of its prominence, of course, is, is something to do with the, the, the problems that housing uh, systems can cause. Uh, and a, another constant companion over my 20-year uh, uh, academic ca career uh, has been what uh, John Mulbauer uh, called in a, in a pamphlet uh, some 20 years ago, uh, the Great uh, British Housing Disaster. Um, and it's the continuance of that Great British Housing Disaster um, that, that underpinned uh, the, the reasons for the Roundtree Foundation's housing, housing market uh, uh, task force. Um, now, we, we've seen in the last uh, pr presentation that this, this uh, problem of house price volatility is, is, and housing market volatility is, is quite, quite widespread. Um, what, what is distinctive, I think, about the UK's experience of house price volatility is quite how persistent uh, it has been. Uh, we haven't necessarily had the most severe housing market cycles in any single episode. Uh, so as we've seen, the, the case of Ireland is more severe in the current uh, cycle. Uh, and in the early 1990s, uh, the, the cycles in uh, Norway and um, Finland were more severe than in the UK. Uh, but what we find is that the UK is a, a kind of uh, a persistent uh, repeat offender uh, in that every time there's a house price boom and bust, uh, the UK um, is, is, is strongly represented um, in it. Um, now, what, one of the questions we, we had to ask ourselves at, at, at the beginning of this process was, well, well does it matter? Is it, you know, quite, is it more than uh, untidiness on, on, on the statistics or on the graph? Uh, well, there are at least three very good reasons why we should be uh, concerned about volatile um, housing markets. And uh, the first of those is, is that they're responsible for a, a high degree of um, social disruption. Um, I think what one of the things that the house price volatility does is to inject a huge amount of uncertainty throughout the entire social um, and economic system. Uh, and for households, it means that the decision of when to buy a house and how much to borrow and so on uh, are clouded in uncertainty because you're, you're trying to make decisions when you don't really know what's going to happen to house prices and you fear that either if you don't buy now, you'll get left behind, uh, or if you do buy now, you might be caught at the peak of the boom and suffer um, suffer the consequences of, of negative equity. Um, I think one of the things that's very clear about, about volatile house price, uh, housing markets is that they also tend to be uh, inflationary housing markets. Um, so we see uh, deteriorating affordability uh, set aside these, these ups and downs in, in, in the housing market. Uh, and in the case of the UK, uh, which has established itself as one of the sort of home-owning democracies, uh, we've seen um, structural declines in, in home ownership, and these predate the bust. Um, and that uh, the cause is that people, younger people, are being priced out uh, of, of home ownership. Um, but the, the social disruption uh, extends beyond that. In, the, in downturns, we have people caught in negative equity. Um, and indeed, since 1980, almost one million homers, homers in the UK um, have, have lost their homes through repossession. Um, and this is despite that every time uh, that there is a housing bust, whatever the government's uh, intentions, uh, it always uh, feels obliged to intervene quite heavily to assist um, distressed borrowers. So it comes at a cost not only to the homeowners who are affected, but to society as a whole. Um, of course, it's not only the, the um, household sector that volatility affects. Um, we see very clearly that it affects, affects lenders. And again, uh, lenders have a great deal of difficulty in interpreting what information you get in a volatile uh, housing market. Um, so they are, are tempted to lend too much in, in a boom. 
Um, and uh, in, in a bust, you tend to get some form of credit tightening, uh, and in this cycle, the extreme form of, of uh, credit crunch. And once again, the government being expected to, to bail out these, uh, uh, the, the banking sector. Um, and the third good reason why we should be concerned about uh, about volatility uh, is that it is damaging damaging to the economy. Uh, now, of course, this is a two-way process. Uh, that if you have a um, if you have a um, an unstable economy, then that will be reflected in the housing market. Uh, but it's a two-way process, and unstable housing markets also contribute to housing uh, to to economic instability. One very good reason for this. Uh, is the role of housing wealth, particularly in a liberalised mortgage system. Uh, so we see that, uh, that uh, economic upturns coincide with uh, housing booms. Uh, then we get uh, uh, additional boosts to consumption through equity withdrawal. Um, and in economic downturns, this is thrown into reverse as homeowners uh, lose wealth, uh, enter negative equity, uh, and uh, no longer can borrow against the, the value of their, of their houses. Um, so those are... Uh, three good reasons why the Roundtree Foundation uh, decided to set up the Housing Market uh, Task Force. Um, I was asked uh, in, in preparing this uh, presentation to say something about why, why we focus specifically on, on housing markets. Uh, well, that partly reflects um, the, the interests of the Roundtree uh, Foundations, whose concerns are primarily not, not to do with the economic management, but to do with uh, social issues such as, uh, such as poverty. Uh, so our focus on housing is, is not, not surprising. Um, the Roundtree Foundation over the years has conducted a number of investigations in, into the home ownership sector uh, and looking for ways to make home ownership more s sustainable. Um, but the task force was, uh, uh, was the first attempt that the foundation had made to look ac across the housing spectrum um, a as a whole. And the reason why we looked across the housing spectrum as a whole is that we needed to, to uh, recognise that the roots of volatility uh, lie in undersupply of housing across the whole housing system. Uh, and not just in the home ownership sector. And we also uh, uh, need to recognise uh, that the, the demand and indeed consumer preference for home ownership above other tenures is fuelled by shortages of social rented housing uh, and in the case of the UK, uh, the chronic insecurity uh, that we have in, the, in our private rental sector. Um, the task force also operate, uh, represented uh, a different way of, of um, seeking solutions uh, in order to give policy re uh, recommendations. Um, because we took the view that volatility can only be tackled by looking at the housing system as a whole um, and that the, ha the individual components of this had already been well researched, uh, we, th we considered it important to look at the big picture uh, whilst retaining a command of the details. Uh, so the task force is made up of, of um, five people with uh, different areas of expertise, uh, including one person who had been on the Bank of England's Monetary Policy Committee, uh, another person who would had background in the lending industry, mortgage industry, someone else who's chief executive of a large housing association, uh, and another academic with a, an expertise in personal uh, finance. Um, we also operated uh, on the basis of consensus, uh, so that everything we recommended uh, was, was quite robustly tested. Um, and this may have made uh, our, our, our recommendations a little more cautious than some people would have liked, uh, but it also meant that everything we recommended was robust, uh, and I think this helped to, to contribute to maintaining the credibility uh, of the report as a whole. Uh, and that was crucial because we needed to change attitudes to housing policy generally uh, rather than simply um, campaign for the adoption of particular uh, policies. Um, what were our main recommendations? Um, well, most fundamentally, our view was that to tackle uh, housing market volatility in the UK in the long run, uh, we emphasised the fundamental need to Im improve uh, the supply of housing. Uh, partly by providing the right incentives through the planning system, but also, and crucially, uh, by providing an adequate supply of new uh, social rented housing. Um, I think at this point I, I should perhaps uh, add another comment, given um, uh, Robert's presentation concerning um, the, the coincidence of house price booms in Ireland and Spain in particular with, with building booms. Um, I think what we mean by improving the supply uh, of, of housing uh, is that we need steady year upon year increases in the supply of housing uh, to, to clear the backlog of, log of shortages uh, of stock in relation to households um, and projected future 
uh, household growth, as opposed to having building sectors that are highly speculatively driven uh, and therefore also drawn into the uh, into the boom bust cycle. Uh, so it's a steady year on year increase in supply that that, that we were looking for. Um, now, we also recognised two things. One was that uh, in the UK it would be a long time before we, we achieve that kind of um, level uh, level of output, uh, so volatility is likely to be a persistent feature of the UK market. And I think even in, in countries where there is a much better balance between households and housing stock, it is nonetheless uh, also, uh, still um, vulnerable to volatility uh, because of the asset and speculative nature of, uh, of, 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 uh, of, of property, of housing. Um, so we thought it was also important to have instruments available to tackle uh, volatility in the short run. Um, and one of the most important recommendations that, that we used uh, was, that, uh, was suggested was that um, uh, the government or the regulatory authorities should be able to apply uh, credit controls in the form of maximum loan to value ratios on mortgages uh, in, in, in booms in order to, pr to prevent inflationary expectations uh, developing. Uh, now that would fit uh, neatly into the macro prudential uh, framework that's being uh, developed by the Bank of England um, at, at, at the moment. Uh, but it, it's got to be recognised that these are, these are quite tough decisions um, uh, requiring some trade-offs in that if you do apply credit controls in, in, in that way, then you will be denying mortgage finance to some people who could perfectly safely and adequately uh, finance a high loan-to-value mortgage. Uh, so we're saying that the, the social benefits of preventing a boom outweigh the, uh, the benefits of accessing finance to some individual um, households. Um, our second crucial uh, recommendation was um, to uh, strongly recommend that we move in the direction of, of property value uh, taxation. Um, what we were envisaging is the kind of property tax that has been advocated by uh, the economist, uh, again, uh, John Mulbauer, um, whereby um, uh, uh, residential property is subject to an annual tax based on a, a proportion of its, of its capital value. Uh, there are strong theoretical reasons for uh, believing that such an approach would uh, would be counter cyclical um, and uh, whilst um, one of those areas that politicians fear to tread in uh, we've had some encouraging developments uh, I think in in uh, political discourse in the UK in recent months in accepting uh, that that wealth does need to be uh, taxed uh, more heavily than it is uh, at at present um, a third area of recommendations uh, was that uh, we do need to protect homeowners um, from the consequences of volatility uh, in a, a more coherent way than we do at the moment. Um, at the moment, the government tends to say in a boom, uh, look, uh, if you enter home ownership, it's your risk. Uh, if there's a downturn, it's your responsibility. Um, however, when there is a downturn, uh, such as the social problems and political costs of uh, laissez-faire that the government always intervenes, um, we uh, better to uh, prevent the problem developing in the first place. Uh, we support the government's moves towards a more uh, regulated system uh, of a lending uh, based on individual assessments of, um, of applicants' uh, uh, incomes uh, and to assess uh, mortgage lending on the basis of affordability. Um, secondly, uh, we think it's important that uh, uh, it's crucial to increase the level of financial uh, literacy and capability um, amongst uh, amongst homeowners um, so that they can make better informed decisions themselves. Um, and our third recommendation uh, in this area was to uh, create a much better safety net for homeowners uh, through a compulsory uh, partnership insurance scheme uh, which would be funded by contributions from lenders, borrowers um, and from the government. Um, our final area of recommendations um, concern the need to develop better alternatives to home ownership. Uh, we share the view that, um, that uh, if you distort incentives in favour of home ownership, uh, then you do tend to increase the uh, destabilising um, uh, effect of, 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 of the tenure on the housing market as a, as a whole. Um, we have had a growing private rented sector in the UK in recent years. This is highly deregulated 
uh, based on market rents and a complete lack of security uh, of, of tenure. We try to find convincing ways that we could regulate it better uh, without discouraging investment, um, and uh, we couldn't really find find a solution within the UK uh, context. And that meant that we placed uh, even greater emphasis uh, on the importance of ensuring uh, that there is support, uh, including financial support for the social rented sector. As at present, that is the only tenure that can provide a safe and secure um, alternative to home ownership for those who cannot either afford it uh, or safely access it. Um, an overall concluding point um, is, is that um, w when we're looking across the housing system as a whole, um, we, um, we note that government is concerned about various different aspects of the housing system. Um, and if you like, there's always a danger uh, when a housing system has been disruptive uh, that in finding solutions you, you fight the last battle. Um, in, in the case of the UK, uh, probably macroprudential supervision uh, is that area. Uh, one of the things that concerns me um, is that we also n uh, need to take a, a sector-wide approach at destabilising um, sectors within the economy, and I think that's a, a very good reason why governments uh, or regulatory authorities to, should take a, lo a look across the housing system as a whole to ensure that you have a, a package um, of, of reforms uh, that tackle all the different aspects of, of volatility and social instability. Um, thank you for your attention.